everybody and welcome to our channel. My name is Sam. My name is Ryan. And today we are reacting to some theater fails. Woohoo! When's the last time we did this? Like 2020, 2021? It, it was a long time ago. And it was ago. a very long time ago. Yeah. We were filming at my at work. Five, yeah. At yeah, the time, that's what it was called. Time. Yeah, it, it was still High Five Studios. Yeah. It was that long ago. We are finally doing a part two to this video because obviously you guys love it anytime we do musical theater content. And I think it's been long enough to where we're going to get some new compilations a on fresh YouTube. Batch. Uh, I don't think we have to explain to you what musical theater fails. It's pretty self-evident in the title. Mm -hmm. Should we just dive into these? I think we should just dive in. If you're watching this and you don't know... Uh, Ryan's a Broadway theater performer, <laughs> and so he's going to be looking at this through his expert lens. We're going to get some really nice critiques, some feedback. Critiques? From, no, Heavens. I'm no, I can't. I'm oh, my goodness. No, this is just all in good fun. Uh, I'm just a big musical theater fan, so those are our credentials. Let's get into it. I see Little Red right away, and I'm scared. <laughs> there she got it she got back on it so what did the baker's wife say they're like are you sure you know the way yeah. That's what that's what it sounds like. It sounds like she she you know tried to help guide her along. Oh, anytime I see anyone doing Into the Woods, I or Sondheim in general, I get nervous because I have flashbacks. I have like war flashbacks to when my community theater production did Into the Woods. That rehearsal experience was a nightmare. It's so hard. Sondheim is hard. Yeah, we did it in high school too. I think because Into the Woods is like oh all of the fairy tales coming together it's yeah. like disney it's little red riding hood and cinderella it's gonna be fine and then you like you that's not just something that you can listen to a few times it's like i have the gist like mm -hmm. counting that out sondheim is the shakespeare of musical theater that is really hard to do and i mean i don't how old is that girl 10 11 mm, like yeah that's tough. Props to the baker's wife for coming in there with mm. the clutch save. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm glad that the audience seemed sympathetic in that moment to just sort of let Little Red Riding Hood uh, find her footing. Yeah. I mean, talk about Sondheim being hard to sing on its own. Trying to improv ahead of time in Sondheim to support, to kind of like give someone else their next line on time. That's some math that I don't know how to do. <laughs> this Broadway professional's opinion, good looking out. <laughs> Of course, if you are not physically in, like, I'm sure she, you know, maybe hurt her wrist a little bit, just kind of like, ooh, ow. But, like, if you are not injured enough to the point that, like, something terrible has happened, because if something terrible has happened, obviously that takes precedent, your safety takes precedent. But if you have enough to just pop up and make a moment af out of the fact that you have just fallen, the audience loves that that girl gets so an good. a plus well because that's what makes theater feel so like magical sometimes is like they're doing it live right now anything can happen and so when someone improvises or like makes a great moment memorable out of something that went wrong it feels like special it feels like you get to have like theater fan bragging rights of like oh i was there that night when this happened well and no one's perfect it's a wink yeah. and a nod to the audience it's sort of a, a shared moment of humanity that i think is really good there mm. the and waiting and waiting Uh, 
okay, a common theme here. I mean, I saw that table behind her. I knew that she was going to get up on that table. I knew that the table was going to collapse. I mean, I no. saw that coming from a mile away. I did not see her popping up with the porta bra though. That's again so good. Exactly what we just said. Making a moment out of something that could feel embarrassing or just could hurt you. I feel like every community theater or high school production uses those like plastic folding tables. I, yeah. You should never do that. Well, like, even from the other clip, like, so the big thing is we're just going to put this office chair from English class 2B on the stage and she's going to stand up on it. Like, nope. can we just, okay, so I don't want to like say anything disparaging about the fact that they lack budget if they do, but it's two things. One, get this person something to stand on that's sturdy. And two, if you don't have the funding, get the funding. Why don't these communities fund the arts programs? This is another soapbox well, that I yeah, could talk about Well, yeah, that's we could talk about that for years. ages. Like the comparison between the football locker room and the theater dressing room. Right. Like, oof, that's a whole other, whole other thing. That's a theater fail of another kind. <laughs> nope. Other I have so many things to say because, first of all, she's not walking because she has just fallen, which is really, really great. But I do have to go back really quick because is Homeboy in the front row doing a f***ing crossword puzzle? I am pissed. That is so disrespectful. I have no hope for society anymore. I'm so over it. That is absurd. And to sit in the front row, like that's just all, that's all sorts of messed up. Oh my God. I just like, <sighs> I genuinely, I mean this with every fiber of my being and you can hate me for saying this all you want. I don't care. I want something bad to happen to that man. <laughs> like I genuinely, I don't want him to die. I don't want him to get too seriously ill. I don't want him to lose any member of his family, but like I want him to be in a non serious car accident that wrecks his car forever. Mm. I want his roof to cave in and damage all of his things, but his family and him are okay. I thought maybe this was like a compilation of just uh, sort of a, a menagerie, a potpourri of theater moments, if you will. Not all of them fails. And I thought, I had half a mind to believe that she was going to be like, got no time to talk, I'm a dead girl, and just <gasps> rip his phone out of his hand. That's so funny, because I didn't notice the phone. Oh my god, the it's the first through. thing I saw. Uh, I just have to circle back to the irony of her tripping and falling while singing Dead Girl Walking. I hope you're okay. I'm sure you are. That's brilliant. Maybe she, instead of playing into the walking part, she was playing into the dead girl part. Oh yeah, it was a choice. I do theater. And if you're wondering if I'm good or not, here is one of my highlights. No. Lights. Come on, lights. <laughs> the camera work is exceptional with the quick zoom out to reveal that we are indeed two inches from the floor. Oh, that's tough, girl. That's tough. I mean, that's just the tech team missing a cue. Like, what would you have done? I would have kept my balance. <laughs> Like, no, we'll be, no, seriously. So you have to be prepared for the lights not to go out. I mean, frankly, that's one of the first things you have to think about because if they don't go out, you are left in a very, obviously I'm talking metaphorically here, naked moment. Mm -hmm. And so as a con, you know, there, there is a way to sort of have a suggestion that you're about to do it without actually leaning your body forward. Because frankly, even if the lights do go out at the right time, she lost her balance and fell forward. So you would hear on the stage in the blackout. Well, I think she did that because the lights, like I, I think the plan was probably for just her to do that and the lights black out, but then they weren't going out. So she didn't know what to do. So she kind of like stepped forward, like, and was hoping that the lights were going to come out. I thought she just lost her balance. I didn't know that that was like a choice. Like I'm going to show them the unaliving process. I think it was a choice that led to her losing her balance. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because I think I think there is a moment of that breath before the jump. And that's, 
you know, that's what we did. And Katie uh-huh. Ladner was raised up like five feet. Like there was an obvious suspension of disbelief. If Katie would have jumped with her full body, she wouldn't have gotten hurt. Yeah. There was this sort of like suspension of like, it's going to happen. But she didn't literally lean forward because she would fall. Mm-hmm. And you have to... You, the, the whole point is that the audience doesn't see it happen. They assume it's going to. So, like, just don't lean too far forward, girly. Yeah. Because you have to You have to expect that everyone's going to miss their cues. You have to expect that everything's going to go wrong. So that if it does, inevitably, you look like a genius and not like an idiot. No, oh, Martha, I'm sorry. In a lot of these musical theater fail compilations, we see community theater, we see middle school, high school. It's always fun when a Broadway one pops up here. Uh, and from a Broadway legend herself, this is Adina Menzel from If Then. Adina Menzel? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I forgot to call her by her God-given name, Adele Dazim. many things <laughs> i mean again sometimes there is just so much pie on your face that the only thing you can do is invite the audience to be in on the joke and your fellow actors to be in on the joke and to just acknowledge a fail is happening and there's nothing i can do i have had to walk off stage to get a crucial prop before it does not feel good that is so <laughs> Funny and that ad lib they make them so small these days. Yeah, oh my that's god, so good. that's so good. I mean, heroes—they're just like us. Uh, I I do love, and I'm kind of I'm curious as to why she didn't take the phone from the castmate because the castmate binder has a phone in her purse and immediately goes like. Uh, but maybe this is like an important prop or something. I don't know. <laughs> Oh man, it uh, it's it's the worst when it happens to kids. Oh, absolutely. You know, cuz you just you have no idea like when you're a child, it's kind of one thing or the other. You either truly don't care or at all or it's something that you're going to cover in therapy 20 years from then. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like it's either going to scar you permanently or you're going to forget about it in 5 minutes. Yeah, we might be laughing at a pivotal moment of <laughs> Pinocchio's life right now. <laughs> Him and his therapist just have shorthand for that. Just the nose incident. <laughs> when I was laughed off stage at Carver Elementary School. I never had any friends after that. Middle and high school, I was alone, ostracized. Went on not to believe in any of my talents. My first three books are failures. No one bought them. Not a single copy sold. Not a single copy? I know. Isn't that sad? Oh, God, that's really His sad. His parents won't even talk to him <laughs> because that stupid nose. Like, you can't do anything right, Charles. You'll never amount to anything. Your father is su- the most successful cold magnet in all of Ohio. Cold magnet? Coal. Oh, <laughs> sorry, the accent. I guess. Uh, yeah. I guess we should move on. <laughs> yeah, probably. Thanks to my new press Again, like, okay, so first of all, the Farquaad costume is just a breeding ground for theater veils. Absolutely. But, again, like, he do, you, there's not, you, he doesn't have a foot. You can't, you can't improv around that. Nope. 
you ju- that everyone notices. You just ha- it j- you just have to make it into a joke. And thankfully, Lord Farquaad especially, I feel like shows up in all of these like blooper compilations yeah. because that that's a character where if your improv is right and tight, it makes for really funny moments. Well, here's the situation again. Barring situations where you are in actual physical danger, mm-hmm. the audience is either laughing with you or at you. If those are your only two options, they might as well be laughing with you. Yeah. And it looks like we got one more here. One more. All right, let's see. Here we go. Is he just laughing there at the end? Yeah, he's, which, you know, thank Uh, God. (laughs) Yeah, like, (laughs) oh. What was supposed to happen? I think, I think he was supposed to gracefully (laughs) fly in and stay flying. Oh, but, but he fell. So he, so he was supposed to like kind of just be flying there but be flying the around during beauty school drop out. just kind of dropped him yeah okay copy because yeah seeing that harness on him and everything i was like was this supposed to be just a slow descent and he was supposed to get out of that like i don't understand what was supposed to happen but... yeah community and high school theater programs if you don't have a really good fly system and a really safe secure and also relatively invisible harness for your actor just don't fly them they don't need to fly just don't fly them it's real like this is not hard math you know come up with an artistic you know what i don't even need it to be artistic it can be so stupid but just make the flying not actually involve flight because here's the thing do you want to be the cheap theater program that kind of sucks or the you know cheap theater program that is the national lawsuit everyone's following probably the first one probably well another successful uh watch through some pretty incredible musical theater fails absolutely and you know i think the reason that so many musical theater fails exist is because musical theater is hard random and unpredictable Mm -hmm. And uh, just putting my Broadway professional <laughs> hat on one more time, <laughs> like that, I I have I have fallen out of apparatuses. I have forgotten props. I have had costume malfunctions at the lowest and highest levels of theater. Some of the some of the gravest errors that I have experienced have been at the highest level of theater. It doesn't get bigger than Broadway. So like if you have ever been a musical theater girly with some terrible epic fail that you just can't seem to live down, just know that it happens mm. in every theater to everyone at some time or another. If you guys have like TikTok compilations or your favorite theater compilations, uh please leave links in the comments down below. Let us all enjoy them and Maybe we'll do a part three if you really want it. Wow. As always, be Be sure sure to to like and subscribe. And we will see you all next time. Bye, Daddy. Bye.